Good day, good afternoon. My name is Sarah Gashia and I'm a registered nutritionist and um, wellbeing consultant from Westminster City Council uh, from the London Healthy Workplace Award. And I'm going to be talking to you this afternoon about um, immune and mood boosting foods. Uh, so I work as part of the uh, London Healthy Workplace Award, which is an award from the Mayor of London, um, and it's to support HR directors and businesses in Westminster to improve the health and well-being of their employees. Um, so as I said, I'm a registered nutritionist, and I'm going to talk to you today about uh, the foods that can help to support our immune system and boost our mood to make sure that we can be working at our best. Yes, so this is what we are going to go through today. So eating the rainbow um, and how that can help to support your immune system, uh, because we, as we know, there isn't any food that can help, um, uh, that can prevent us from getting an infection um, or from getting COVID-19. But by eating the right foods, we can help to ensure that our immune system is functioning at its best. Um, and also uh, why it's important to eat well during working hours. So we'll just touch a little bit on workplace well-being uh, because as we know, it's now important more than ever. Um, and good mood food, how that can help at work. And uh, we will finish off with um, why we need more D and uh, Q and A. So firstly, why is it important that we eat healthily during the working hours? Um, and I'm purposely not saying at work because, you know, our work has become our home and our home is our work. So it's all kind of intertwined now. Um, the, so the first reason is we consume at least a third of our daily calories uh, whilst at work. And um, I say at least because if we're consuming snacks and other meals, then it could be a lot more than that. Um, also, nice guidelines, um, so like NHS guidelines have shown that um, obesity has actually led to a loss of productivity of about £125,000 for a company that employs over a 1,000 people. Now, I'm not going to focus on obesity today, but I just thought it was quite an interesting statistic to think about uh, forming healthy eating habits. Um, because of, of what obesity can do to loss of productivity. So I guess if you're like a manager or you're in a company, then it might be something worth thinking about. Um, uh, so also, it, if you do eat well at work, then it will boost your energy, uh, improve your performance and improve productivity again. So, you know, we can work a lot better if we focus on uh, eating well whilst we're at work. So the first thing I'm going to get us to think about is uh, how we can improve our eating habits at work or what influences our eating habits at work. Uh, so there are many things that affect our eating habits. Um, it could be things like taste preferences, um, uh, social things. It could be like religion, culture. But I just want us to spend a couple of minutes reflecting on what affects the way we eat at work. Um, and yeah, feel free just to post in the chat. Um, and yeah, we will, I'll just give you a couple of minutes to have a think about that. Great. Um, so yeah, it can be things like um, other priorities, other demands. It could be fast food. Um, time, uh, you know, and that's time to prepare food, um, or it could be time to take away from the desk. Uh, I'll talk in a moment about kind of like mindless eating at the desk and not taking a break. Um, so these are kind of like some of the things that affect the way we eat at work. Uh, but being bored, stressed, and anxious. Um, are some of the things that have been reported, uh, in fact, in this survey by the British Nutrition Foundation and YouGov. Um, and this looked at eating habits during lockdown. It was quite interesting, I think, because of the stockpiling of food, the added stress of the news and working from home. Um, and it's let, this has led us to kind of form some unhealthy eating habits. Um, and I'm sure it's something that we could all relate to now that we're working from home. Um, or even if we think about kind of like the, the office cake culture that we had as well, um, 
And, you know, if you've had, I'm sure we've all been guilty, if you've had like kind of five or six meetings that have ran over, you've skipped lunch, and then you just reach for the first thing on the cabinet, or now kind of like the unlimited array of snacks that we have um, at home. Um, so yeah, that just it is just to give us a little idea about kind of how people have been feeling uh, during lockdown and eating habits. Uh, so you can see here some of the, the percentages um, and yeah, people's you know shopping habits and going to the supermarket has been affected as well. Um, and yeah, it's just that kind of feeling of, of anxiety and stress and boredom that have kind of led to overeating. Um, so, as I said, when you, you know, you have all these meetings and you're mindlessly eating at the desk and all these video calls, um, it can sometimes lead to uh, what's known as the mid-afternoon sugar crash. And um, what happens, though, is, is that can often lead us to um, making us kind of feel irritable because the, the brain requires uh, a lot of sugar and glucose to, to work properly for uh, cognitive function. And, you know, it can lead to uh, feeling kind of, as I said, irritable, low concentration, low mood, uh, slower reaction time. And so what we can do to avoid this is to make sure that we're having regular meals, um, is to make sure that we are kind of uh, keeping hydrated, drinking, and in our regular meals to make sure we are having starchy carbohydrates. Now, we know that starchy carbohydrates um, are a, a good source of energy, uh, but they are also a good source of B vitamins, and these are really good uh, for not only for our immune function, but good for our mood as well and stabilizing our mood. Um, so we can also ask ourselves some really key questions um, that uh, ensure kind of we form these healthy eating habits, and that is, um, have I had 45 hours between my last meal? Um, am I snacking just because there are biscuits and uh, chocolates there waiting to be eaten? Um, because if we um, do snack on something kind of healthy, then we can uh, avoid that uh, starving sensation that you often get before meal times that can lead us to overeating. Um, so what we uh, want to think about is um, whole grains. Uh, so I've just put here about lean gains. So I don't know if anyone's heard of like gym culture and, and lean gains, uh, but for this muscle for the brain, we need to think about whole grains. Um, and not only are they a fantastic source of fiber, which we do not get enough of, um, but also, as I said, these B vitamins, um, and they help to support um, our immune function, but also our mood. So we need to make sure that we are getting more fiber. Uh, and, by, and by, you know, eating kind of like these whole grain foods, um, we can help to support our gut um, and support our brain as well. Um, and another key nutrient that we need to think about for our mood, uh, stabilizing our mood is uh, omega-3. And um, omega-3 we need to get from the diet um, because we it, it's an essential fatty acid, which means basically we can't make it in the body. And, uh, you know, what we do know is that it affects our mood, it affects mental health as well and stabilizing our mental health. So it's another key nutrient that we, that we need to think about for, um, for mood. So you can get it from oily fish, um, but not to worry if you're vegetarian or vegan because you can get it from um, flax seeds, pumpkin seeds and also walnuts. Uh, this is just a nice picture, as you can see, kind of the brain um, of some of the key foods that can help to support our brain health. Yeah, we can see kind of look at a wide range of foods here uh, that are high in antioxidants, um, high in good fats as well, um, and things like beans and legumes, as well, good source of fiber. Uh, great. So what I want to go into now is to talk about the uh, immune system. And uh, as I've put here, variety is the spice of life, uh, because we, what we want to think about is uh, having uh, a lot more fruit and vegetables because they are a good source of vitamins and minerals that are required for each stage of the immune response. 
So for example, as I've put here, uh, before the microbe even gets in, so things like uh, our skin and the respiratory and gastrointestinal tract um, requires things like vitamin A and vitamin D. And um, we can see that we can get a lot of these vitamins and minerals through fruits and vegetables. And the important thing that I've put here is that you need to eat a wide range of colors uh, because each different color gives you a different vitamin and a different mineral. Um, and, and that's kind of what we need to, to make sure our immune system is functioning properly. Because what we know actually is that you can't uh, prevent an infection or COVID-19 through food. Um, and you can't also boost your immune system. And we wouldn't want to, to do that. But what we want to do is prevent uh, malnutrition through immunodeficiency. So by making sure that we take all of these vitamins and minerals, we can make sure that the uh, immune system is working at its best. And what I've put here is a recipe card for a really lovely, uh, colorful, nutritious um, Lebanese salad which has a lot of the kind of in its key ingredients um, makes up kind of a lot of the um, key vitamins and minerals that we need to help support our immune system and there's a lot of evidence um, behind these vitamins and minerals to improving our immune function for example if you look at the the carbs here the bulgur wheat it's uh, high in vitamin b vitamins which as i said support um, our brain health but also the immune system and then we can get vitamin C as well from the tomatoes and vitamin K from the parsley and the mint. Uh, so as I said, it's quite nutrient dense and um, can be, yeah, it's like an immune boosting uh, recipe, I guess, if you want to think about it that way. Uh, great, okay, so we need to get more D. Um, and this is, yeah, quite exciting because I don't know if you all saw in the media this morning uh, about vitamin D and COVID. Um, so there is actually a lot of uh, scientific evidence to show that it uh, reduces the risk of COVID-19. Um, there have been randomized control trials, which are like the um, strongest kind of scientific evidence where they've done, they've tested people um, who've been hospitalized and it's reduced their severity of COVID-19. Um, and there have been uh, uh, other trials to show that people who were in ICU, it kind of improved their mortality. There were trials done in Israel, trials done in the UK, and I think by 87% it improved people's um, mortality from having COVID-19. It reduced their risk of having, um, of being hospitalized and of, of having a positive COVID test. So we know this for sure, it's quite exciting. Um, you know, they've spent a lot of time kind of looking into vitamin D and COVID-19 specifically. And, you know, now we know that there's a link. So all the more reason to make sure that you take a vitamin D supplement of at least 10 micrograms per day, as I've put down here. Um, so yeah, what we do know is that vitamin D does have a role to play in immune function. Um, and we know this because it's actually the immune cells make vitamin D into its active form. Um, it makes uh, and the vitamin D receptor, uh, which is basically what vitamin D would bind to, is found in immune cells. Um, and they're normally in, you know, it's like the kidneys and, and other type of cells, but now they're in the immune cells, so we know that they're linked to that. Um, and also uh, reduces inflammation and has a role to play in the innate and the adaptive immune system as well. Uh, yeah, so that's how it's kind of related to immune function. Uh, we know that we are quite uh, deficient in vitamin D as a population, and especially people who are immobile or have a darker skin pigmentation, um, or if you wear skin covering clothes. Um, so essentially, all this means is a lack of direct uh, sunlight. And um, so normally as a nutritionist, I would recommend getting your vitamins and minerals through food. Um, but vitamin D is the exception to this because the, you know, it's not really present in a lot of foods. So as you can see on the slide, I've put a couple of examples uh, of where you can get vitamin D. Uh, for example, oily fish, so like omega-3. Uh, you can also get it in fortified things, so like uh, fortified um, almond milk and non-dairy products and breakfast cereals. 
Uh, but our main source is from the sun. And um, yeah, we don't get much of that here. So that's why we're recommending to take a vitamin D supplement. Um, and it, it is interesting actually, because if you think about um, people who've been affected mostly by COVID-19, people with darker skin, um, older people, and uh, you know, so these people tend to be at higher risk of vitamin D deficiency. So there is that link there and that's quite interesting. Great, okay, so what I have here is a, um, a behavior change tool um, that we can use to think about setting healthier eating habits. Um, so if we just have a think about kind of like everything I've spoken about um, this afternoon, so like the vitamin D, um, taking uh, an extra portion of fruit and vegetables, um, uh, how our eating habits have changed during lockdown and working from home. And um, if we just spend some time kind of thinking about an eating habit that we might want to, to work on, um, and we can, we can kind of discuss that. Yeah. So this smarter um, behavior change tool, I'm sure everybody has heard of smart goal setting. Yeah. Um, so this basically just asks key questions to help you set a, a healthier uh, goal, basically. Um, so it, it makes you think about kind of the goal that you want to set. So it could be, I want to eat more vegetables um, at dinner and then kind of setting a specific time when you'll do that. Uh, what do I need to do to do that? Do I need to make sure I buy more vegetables when I go in the food shop? Um, what's stopping me? What are my barriers? And I think it's just a really key thing to think about when we think about um, forming uh, healthier eating habits and, you know, all the stuff that I've talked about today about um, fruits and vegetables and snacking healthier and having whole grains uh, and how that can support our immune system. Uh, fantastic. Okay, thank you so much, everybody, for your time.